Good morning, church family. It is day 14. That's right, day 14 of our 40-day prayer journey. It has been a blessing for me. I hope it has been a blessing for you. Thank you so much for tuning in, for listening to the devotional thoughts, to joining in in prayer. I believe this will be a blessing for your family and for our church as a whole. And our purpose and our aim in this 40-day journey is to be with Jesus, to listen to his words, and to unite with him in his work. So we're on day 14, and our theme today is simply this, speak to the mountain. Speak to the mountain. In his book, Draw the Circle, Mark Batterson makes a comment. He says, many times we go to God in prayer and we speak to God about the mountains and the challenges and the obstacles in our life. But what would happen if we then got up from that prayer and we spoke to the mountains about how great and powerful and awesome our God is? Speak to the mountain, right? I'm thinking of the story of David and Goliath. You remember this story? The Israelites are being confronted by the Philistines in battle. But instead of engaging in armies battling armies, uh, the Philistines sent out their greatest soldier, their greatest warrior, uh, a Goliath. And Goliath went and taunted the Israelites for 40 days straight, uh, 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 trying to get them to send their best warrior out for a epic one-on-one -on -one battle. Not only that, but Goliath would defy the Israelite God, dishonoring him day after day for 40 days. And what's crazy is no one from Israel would stand up to him. No soldier, not even the king, no one stood up. And except when a shepherd boy who brought some lunch for his brothers shows up sees what's happening and is beside himself because no Israelite will stand up to this giant. And so David himself, that's his name, right? He decides, I'm going to battle this giant. Now, I imagine when he goes to, the, to get his five stones for his sling, I imagine he is in prayer with God concerning this giant. But I don't have to imagine the next part because the Bible is clear when he goes out to battle, after he's done speaking to God about the mountain, he begins to speak to the mountain about his God. Do you remember what David says to, to Goliath? David says to him, look, you come at me with sword and spear and javelin, but let me tell you something. I'm coming at you in the name of the Lord. And David finishes later. He says, this battle belongs to the Lord and he will deliver you into our hands. Woo! David was speaking with serious certainty, not because of his faith in himself, but because his faith in, a, in an awesome God. Man, you know, Jesus said in the book of Matthew, he said to his disciples, truly I say to you, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move, and, and you can move it from here to, or move from here to there, and it will move. You can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move nothing will be impossible for you. Wow. After speaking to God about the mountains in our life, do we then go to the mountains and speak about how great and how awesome our God is? I love that song, right? Our God, he's an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. I don't know about you, church family, but that's what I want to practice in my life. After going to God and sharing about the mountains that are concerning me, that are bringing me fear or anxiety or worry in my life and trying to lay those at his feet, I want to get up from that intimate prayer time and prayer space. And I want to be able to say to my mountains how great and awesome and powerful my God is. Woo! If you need some Bible text this morning, I just want to remind you, Romans 8, 31. Scripture says, if God is for us, <laughs> who can be against us? Romans 8, 37, you know what that says? We are more than conquerors through him who loves us. But you know the two I really love? Uh, uh, Romans 
8, 28 and Matthew 16, 18. These are powerful because they let us know, look, these battles and these fights that we have in our life, they've already been won. Listen to this, Romans 8, 28. For we know that God works all things together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. He works it for the good. See, this story already has an ending. What happens at the end? The good. For who? For those who love him. See, the ending's already been written. Look at, look at Matthew 16, 18. Oh, I love this one. I get chills every time I quote this one. Jesus says to the disciples about his church that he is trying to build. He says, and the gates of hell will not prevail. Church family, in your life, the gates of hell cannot prevail. Oh, they can show up. Oh, they can threat, threaten and they can taunt, but they can't prevail. So with that knowledge in mind, when you are in your prayer space speaking to God about the mountains, I want to encourage you to get up from there with your faith, even if it's a mustard seed, and start to speak to the mountains about your God. I want us to practice that as a church family. So for the next 30 seconds, we're going to have a moment of silence here, and you can uh, share with God your thanks, your gratitudes, your praises, your uh, burdens, your concerns, your worries. And after those 30 seconds, I'm going to lead us in a prayer about speaking to the mountains in our life. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father in heaven, how wonderful it is that we have a heavenly father who never sleeps and never slumbers. And Lord, we know that you are for us. And because you are for us, it doesn't matter who's against us. Whoever is against it is overmatched. Whatever weapon is formed against us cannot prosper. These are truths in scripture. They might be present, but they can't prosper. So, Lord, we thank you for these truths. We thank you that we can come to you in prayer and speak to you about the mountains in our lives. And because you are for us and nothing can be against us, Lord, help us to get up from our prayer time and our prayer space. And as, they go, as we go through our lives and we have to navigate these challenges and navigate these mountains, give us the divine, not human found, but divine courage to speak to the mountains about our great God. Our great God who promises through his, promised us through his son, Jesus Christ, that the gates of hell, this is a certainty, will not prevail. I pray this over my church family, who I love dearly. I pray this over their homes. I pray this over their hearts. I pray this over their children. I pray this over the marriage couples. I pray this over the single. I pray this over every man and woman and boy and girl. If God is for us, who can be against us? Empower us, Lord, not only to speak to you about the mountains, but to speak to our mountains about how great you are. Lord, we thank you so much and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, church family, I love you. Don't forget www.foothillsaz.org. You can go there if you happen to have missed any of our previous 40 Days of Prayer uh, video clips. And uh, remember, God is for you. God is with you. And God loves you. We will see you on day 15. Take care.